Coffee Break Italian Season 3, Episode 9. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Ciao, ciao Mark e ciao a tutti. Io sono Francesca. Come stai Francesca? Molto bene, grazie Mark. Una bella giornata oggi, mi, mi sento rilassata, ispirata. Ah, allora, bene. Sì. <ride> tu? Sì, bene, ma devo dire che oggi nello studio fa un freddo cane. Qua ad Air, a Glasgow fa freddo o fa, fa caldo nello studio? Ma io ho sempre freddo come persona, ma in questo studio devo dire che <ride> fa un caldo tropicale. <ride> <laughs> okay, well, I think I'll need to be jealous of you today because in this studio it's absolutely Baltic, as we would say here in Scotland. But nonetheless, we are delighted to be bringing you another episode of Coffee Break Italian. Francesca, what are we talking about today? We are again talking about uh, our beloved pronouns. <laughs> okay, this time it's not... Direct object, not indirect object, not combined pro- pronouns, but what is it? It's disjunctive uh, pronouns. Right, that's a funny word, disjunctive pronouns. But these are the ones that kind of sit outside the the, the, the main type of pronouns in a sense. Um, disjunctive, they're just disjoined from the others. So let, let's see what that means within the, the context of, of our lesson. Okay, va bene. Allora, bando alle chance? Sì, sì, diamo inizio alle danze. Ok, allora, as we said in the introduction, today we are going to talk about a new type of pronoun, disjunctive pronouns. But uh, again, just a quick, very quick recap of uh, all the pronouns we have seen uh, in this season and also uh, in, uh, in the past. Okay, so first of all, we had our direct object pronouns. Sì, perfetto. And these are the ones that replace the the what or the whom. Uh, So the me, you, it, him, and so on. Perfetto, molto bene. Then we had the indirect object pronouns. And uh, those are the ones to or for me, you, he, she, it, and, and so on. Molto bene. And then in the previous episode, we uh, we learned uh, uh, how to put these two pronouns together. That's right, with our combined pronouns. Uh, interesting set of pronouns there where we had to do certain things to them, including uh, change I's to E's and uh, even change uh, les to lies and things like that. <laughs> Sì, and I hope our listeners have had the chance to practice a yellow, yella, yeli, all these tricky new sounds. Absolutely. Now, there's also another type of pronouns I think we've covered in a previous season, and that was reflexive pronouns. Sì, sì, at the start of uh, season two, I can't remember if it was episode three or four, uh, probably episode three, uh, we learned uh, reflexive pronouns, so how to describe actions that we perform uh, to ourselves or the subject uh, to to themselves, like uh, mi lavo, uh, I wash myself, mi pettino, I comb my own hair and so on. So we, we don't have to forget the reflexive pronouns as well. That's right. And there's one other group that I can think of that we've we've talked about, but probably before we really started focusing on this idea of pronouns, and those are our subject pronouns, which we learned way, way back. So the I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, that, that we we're very familiar with. Sì, ovviamente, which we don't use very often in Italian because, as you know, we tend to omit them when speaking Italian. I can just say sono Francesca, but obviously there is a pronoun hidden there, which is io, io sono Francesca. Esatto. Okay, but today it's all about disjunctive pronouns. So, Francesca, can you can you give us a little more information about what a disjunctive pronoun is? Yes, Mark, as you said um, already a little in the introduction, uh, disjunctive pronouns are kind of 
independent uh, uh, pronouns and in a way they are uh, also stronger than uh, than the others uh, uh, if we think for example of uh, direct, uh, indirect, uh, uh, combined and also reflexive uh, pronouns, they, they are all placed in front uh, of the verb. In a way, we can imagine these uh, pronouns as uh, leaning against the verb uh, so that the verb is there to help them to, uh, to, to stand, stand to exist. <laughs> yeah. see, see, okay. see. But disjunctive pronouns are different. They don't come before the verb. Yes, they can be used more or less uh, uh, everywhere in the sentence and they have uh, the, the opportunity to be used after the verb. They are strong enough to be independent. They don't need to lean against uh, a verb in order to exist. And that's why in Italian we call them pronomi tonici as opposed to atoni. So they have, uh, let's say, a tone uh, in a way. So they are strong enough uh, to, to stand on their own feet. <laughs> they've, they've been set free and they're singing themselves. <laughs> exactly. Si, si, si. I, I think we, we, we've talked enough about them. I think we now need to meet them. <laughs> See, we we have to meet them and the reason why they exist uh, is usually uh, either to convey more emphasis to what we are saying or to avoid some sort of um, ambiguity or stress on something very specific. Okay. So, shall we just see some examples? I think that would make sense, yeah. Let's have a look at an example. Okay, so if we take uh, uh, the English, uh, I'm listening to you or I listen to you, Mm -hmm. we can say in Italian, ti ascolto, Mm -hmm. okay, so with with the pronoun uh, uh, ti, the direct object pronoun ti, ti ascolto. We are coming before the verb. Before the verb, we cannot say ascolto ti, that wouldn't work, the sentence wouldn't be grammatically correct in Italian. However, if I want to stress uh, that I'm listening to you or that I'm listening to you and not to him, for example, then I have the, the opportunity to use a disjunctive pronoun and say ascolto te. Right, so ascolto te, that Te, they are coming after the verb, is being used to stress the fact that I'm listening to you, not anyone else. Esatto, sì, sì, sì. Or uh, eh, ti guardo, I'm I'm looking 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 at at you, you. Mm -hmm. but guardo te. Right, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. (laughs) (laughs) Like uh, either I want to draw your attention and uh, you should smile because I'm looking at you (laughs) or in case you're wondering if I'm looking at you or at someone else, I want to reassure you. This really depends on the the specific situation. But the idea is there is either some sort of emphasis or ambiguity that we want to, to avoid. Okay, okay. Should we go through all of the pronouns? Because the the good thing about these disjunctive pronouns is that they're they're quite easy. There's not much to learn, and we'll definitely recognise the words. Sì, 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 sì. Non preoccupatevi, è molto facile. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the disjunctive pronouns are me, mm-hmm. te, yep, lui and lei. So just as we would expect, almost. Sì. And then for the plural, noi, voi, and loro. Right. So in actual fact, there are only two of them which are different from the subject pronouns. Si, si, me and te. Okay, so I would normally be io, but when we're talking about me as this disjunctive form, it's me and te as well. Um, where it would normally be two. Now, Francesca, would, all, would these also be the pronouns that we would use, for example, with a, a preposition like per, for example? Sì, 
Sì, bravissima Mark. This is the other important function of uh, disjunctive uh, pronouns. And uh, one function is what we've just said, uh, ambiguity or emphasis, but the other key function, and probably that's even more important, uh, uh, is the use of these pronouns with uh, prepositions. Okay, so give us so a couple of examples. Some examples. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Ad esempio, uh, se io ti domando, Mark, uh, do you work with Giuseppe? Lavori con Giuseppe? And you want to avoid the repetition of Giuseppe in your answer and you just want to say, yes, I work with him. What would you say? Okay, so we've learned in previous lessons that that him... Uh, it's the English word for the direct object pronoun. So in Italian, we've learned that that would be lo. However, we can't say con lo. We have to use the disjunctive pronoun here and say si lavoro con lui, with him in that sense. Bravissimo, si. And this is because of the presence of a preposition. So uh, in cases like this, it's really important for our listeners not to translate literally from English to Italian. If you see with him, I know probably in your mind, him is now associated with the law, but you need to look at the bigger picture. And because of the preposition con, then you automatically have to uh, switch to disjunctive pronouns. I think I'm right in saying that probably our listeners, before we started talking about direct object pronouns and so on, if we had asked, um, how do you say I work with him? The chances are you would probably have said lavoro con lui without thinking about it. Now you know why you're saying that. It's the special disjunctive pronoun that's used with the prepositions. Lavoro con lui. Um, but um, lo vedo ogni giorno. Uh, I see him every day. Sì, sí, sì. Sí. In this sentence we could have said lavori con Giuseppe. Sì, sí, lavoro con lui. Lo vedo tutti i giorni. E gli dico sempre ciao. <laughs> and there you have the three different ways in which you could potentially be translating the word him in English into lui as a disjunctive pronoun, lo as a direct object pronoun, and gli as an indirect object pronoun. Sì, let, perfetto. Let, let's try one more of these. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, vai da Giulia a cena? Vai da Giulia a cena? Sì, vado da lei a cena questa sera. Okay, so da lei to her house. I'm going to Giulia's house and you said vado da lei and da is our preposition here. I'm going to her house uh, for dinner this evening. Perfetto, sì. Molto bene. Okay, now Francesca, earlier you said that these disjunctive pronouns uh, can they're, they're strong enough to stand after the verb on their own, but can they sometimes come before the verb? Uh, well, when they are used uh, on their own, obviously uh, they go after the verb as an alternative to, let's say, the weak uh, pronouns. Uh, for example, uh, lo guardo, guardo lui, la guardo, guardo lei. So uh, they, t they obviously go after the pronoun for more emphasis. However, when they are joined with a preposition, they're pretty free to go uh, everywhere they want in the sentence. We could say, vado spesso eh, a teatro con lui. Mm -hmm. I often go to the theatre with him. But I could also say, con lui vado spesso a teatro. Okay, yeah, so there um, you're changing, but you're putting that whole section, it's the con lui with the preposition as well, con lui Vado spesso a teatro. Sì, 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 sì. Va bene, ok. Well, we're going to take a short break there and we'll be back in just a moment with a conversation in which, of course, you've guessed it, you're going to hear lots of disjunctive pronouns. But for now, a dopo. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break Italian Season 3, we are also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your Italian. 
That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode in which we'll go through every detail of the dialogues and a third episode for each lesson in which Francesca will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the lesson topic. Of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakitalian.com and follow the links for season three there. Okay, Francesca, can you explain our conversation today? See, today we are again with our friends, uh, <laughs> which we have uh, uh, met uh, uh, before. And this time uh, uh, we have uh, Luigi, mm -hmm. Riccardo and uh, Giulia. And they're talking about different things, uh, but the main topic of the conversation is uh, music, uh, concert, uh, singers. Uh, so it's a very musical conversation. Benissimo. Okay, let's uh, listen to the conversation now and see if you can hear some of these disjunctive pronouns. Ragazzi, devo dirvi una cosa incredibile. Cosa è successo? Oggi in centro ho visto Giovanotti. Hai visto veramente lui? Era con sua moglie? Sì, con lei, mano nella mano. Chiacchieravano come due persone normali. È davvero un cantante simpatico. Io lo ascolto ogni tanto. Mia sorella invece ne va pazza. Ascolta solo lui da quando si alza la mattina fino a quando si addormenta la sera. È tipico degli adolescenti. Mio fratello è un fan scatenato dei modà e ascolta esclusivamente loro. Ma anche noi eravamo così qualche anno fa, non vi ricordate? È vero, siamo anche venuti al concerto nel Negramaro con te perché avevi paura ad andare da sola fino a Torino. Che avventura! Quante cose abbiamo fatto per te! Beh, cosa vuoi dire? Anch'io ho fatto molte cose per voi. Ad esempio, l'anno scorso non sono andata al mare con i miei per accompagnare te, Luigi, al colloquio in banca. E quante volte io invece ho accompagnato te ai colloqui, ai concerti, al cinema e persino dal medico? Dai, ragazzi, tranquilli. Ci guardano tutti. Guardano noi? Ma chi? Ma sì, quei signori laggiù. Stanno guardando proprio te. Oh mamma mia, parlano di noi. Non so, non importa, dai. Scusami Luigi, tra noi c'è un'amicizia speciale e un grande amore per la musica. Non dobbiamo litigare per queste sciocchezze. Giulia ha ragione. E parlando di musica... Beh, Vinicio Capostella ha risposto alla mia email. Ha risposto a te? Sì, ha detto che gli ho scritto delle parole bellissime e come ringraziamento mi ha mandato tre biglietti per il suo concerto di febbraio a Torino. Ha mandato tre biglietti a te? E con chi ci andrai, Riccardino caro? Beh, è una decisione difficilissima. Ci ho dormito un po' sopra e alla fine... Ho deciso di invitare voi. Vuoi davvero invitare me e Giulia al concerto di Vinicio a Torino? Oh, grazie. Sei un tesoro, Ricky. Non vedo l'ora. Ci divertiremo un sacco e potremmo anche visitare Ivrea. È proprio il periodo del Carnavale delle Arance. Ragazzi, propongo un brindisi. A noi! A, A noi! noi. Real drama in that in that conversation. It, it, the, it was like a, a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> Arguments. Sì, mamma mia. <laughs> I, I don't know if that, I should say this, but it did seem very Italian. Perché? <laughs> <laughs> per le, le, le emozioni. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me saying that, Francesca. No, 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 anzi, è un complimento. <laughs> Let's talk through the conversation then. There are three friends here and they're excited because one of them, Luigi, has just seen the popular singer Giovanotti uh, walking hand in hand with his, with his wife in town. 
sì, esatto. And uh, eh, Riccardo's sister is actually crazy about uh, Giovanotti and she listens to him uh, all day long. So this is really uh, great news. <laughs> Now, Luigi's brother also likes music, um, but he does the same with the band Moda. Sì, bravissimo, i Moda sono molto famosi in Italia. Okay. Eh, sì, what else? The, the three friends realize that when they were younger, they, they also had a, a, similar, a similar attitude. And, um, and at the time, when they were teenagers, eh, they even went all the way to, to Torino, to Turin, to accompany Giulia to, to a gig, to the Negramaros eh, gig. Because she was scared to go on her own. <laughs> yeah, and this is when Julia gets a little bit offended and, and uh, she says, yeah, I, I did a lot for you too. Um, for example, I think at one point she missed her summer holiday um, to, to go with Luigi to a job interview. Sì, sì, bravissimo, un colloquio in banca, that's right. And they continue arguing until Riccardo... Okay, tells them, okay, enough, you have basta, to stop. Basta. <laughs> basta, sì. Because everyone, all the people in the, in the cafe were just staring at them. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the arguments don't last long. The, 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 they have a very strong friendship and, of course, an equally strong love for music. Sì, and, uh, and then there is something really important that happens at some point because Riccardo says that the singer, Vinicio Capossela, replied to him, to an email from him, and uh, he sent him three tickets for his next uh, gig, for his next concert in February in, in Torino, again, in Turin. Wow, there's always, there always seems to be uh, a certain element of luck and coincidence in, in these conversations, <laughs> sì, <Francesca>. guarda caso. <laughs> Well, Riccardo then asks Luigi and Giulia to go with him and they're, they're very excited. Sì, and at the end they also mention that they can use uh, the opportunity of this concert in uh, Turin in February to also go to Ivrea to see the famous uh, Battle of the Oranges uh, a carnival which we mentioned. <laughs> we did indeed in the Coffee Break Italian magazine. Esatto, sì, sì, sì. Excellent. So they, Another coincidence. Uh, coincidence, ah, mamma mia. Ah, so uh, they, they, they decide that they're going to do this and, and they, they toast all together um, to, to their adventures, their, their, their future adventures. Now, of course, we'll be going through this in detail in our language study episode, which is part of the Coffee Break Italian course. And uh, you can go ahead and, and listen to that. Um, if you don't have access to that yet, then you can find it at the Coffee Break Academy at coffeebreakacademy.com. Allora, Francesca, oggi c'è ancora una cosina? C'è ancora una cosina, ma anzi, ci sono due cosine. Oh, wow, ok. <laughs> so, what are your due cosine, cosine di sì, oggi? Due cosine sono due modi di dire, due espressioni collegate al tema della musica. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't decide which one to choose, so we thought that today we would go for a, a bonus. Absolutely. <laughs> Now that we have completed all the, the pronouns yeah. we had to learn. A celebration. I think our <laughs> listeners deserve a wee bonus. <laughs> okay, so two phrases, two expressions involving music. What are they? Allora, una è essere sempre la stessa musica. So to always be the same music. Um, but how would we use that? So this is maybe slightly negative. Uh, it's like uh, uh, when the same thing is repeated over and over or when the same situation never changes. Uh, uh, so I don't know, for example... Um, If your grandparents uh, always argue and every time you go and visit them and uh, they're arguing <laughs> again, you would say, ah, oh, sempre la stessa musica. It means it's always the same old story, the same thing repeating itself. Okay, so you would just say, è sempre la stessa musica? Sì, sì, è sempre la stessa musica. And your other expression? The other one, more positive, <laughs> è tutto. Un'altra musica. Right, so it's a, an entirely different music. 
see. And it means it's something completely different, but usually with the idea of being better, of being uh, an improved uh, uh, version of uh, of something else. For example, uh, if someone writes uh, a short story, let's say, and it sounds boring, dull, and then you give some uh, ideas for improvement and uh, you read the same story re re rewritten, And you think, wow, ma questa è tutta un'altra musica. So this is like completely different. It's really good. Excellent. So this is a whole new idea, a whole new thing. Uh, è tutta un'altra musica. Perfetto. Okay, well, that is where the, the music ends for this episode. <laughs> um, we hope that you've enjoyed it as ever. And of course, uh, if, you're, if you've got access to the, the, the bonus materials, then you can go ahead and listen to our language study episode and our translation episode now. Um, but if not, then make sure you listen to the next episode of the podcast, which will be available very soon. Grazie mille, Francesca. Grazie a te, Mark. E un saluto a tutti i nostri ascoltatori. Ciao, alla prossima! You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved.